Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Bay City Players as we present another original comedy. My name is Mike Wisniewski, and I am glad you have joined us for our 15th online performance. Last week, we brought you an original comedy, True Will by William Triplett from Virginia. Tonight, we are thrilled to present the comedy Six Apartments by playwright Neil McGowan from California. Bay City Players is excited to participate in, participate in the Make Art Virtual Campaign started by our friends at Midland Center for the Arts. We would also like to thank our season sponsors, Chemical Bank, Independent Bank, Landall Packaging Systems, Skrupski Family Funeral Home and Cremation Services, Wildfire Credit Union, and Michigan Sugar. Bay City Players is dedicated to our mission of providing high quality theatrical experiences for the entertainment, education, and enrichment for all members of the community. The show must go on, but virtually. So if you're enjoying our virtual performances brought to you by Original Playwrights, please consider donating, donating to Bay City Players by give, going to our website, click the donate link. Any amount you give is greatly appreciated. Now I would like to take a few minutes and introduce our playwright for this evening and have him say a few words about his play. Neil? Hi. My name is Neil McGowan. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say. I just want to first of all thank Bay City Players and everyone involved, all the artists giving their time and energy to this play. Um, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I'm just, um, I'm excited to hear this play. I wrote this play uh, just for fun, really. I wasn't expecting uh, or really ever hoping that it would um, be produced for some reason in any form. And um, uh, so I, um, it's sort of hard to explain, but I started writing it um, back in 2011, and I actually I wrote like one scene, and I thought about all that would um, it would entail with so many actors, and uh, for you know, unless you're like a super famous playwright, a lot of theaters don't want to deal with plays uh, that you know have a lot of actors, or you know, um, um, you know, frankly, they don't want to pay for them, which I understand. So I sort of abandoned it. And then years later, I thought, well, that was a sort of a good idea. Maybe I'll just write it for fun. And so I pulled it out again, and I finished it. And um, it was a lot of fun. And um, so, I mean, the fact that I get to see it and hear it in, in any capacity is really, really cool. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. And um, out there in the audience, I hope you do support this theater and theater in general. Uh, I live in California. I'm from Pittsburgh originally. Um, and uh, I belong to theaters in both of those cities and, and now right in the middle. So um, uh, I just want to thank you all again and I hope you enjoy it. Great, thank you. So with our doors still closed, we are grateful to use this platform to connect with each other. So feel free to comment as the show goes on and let us know what you think. Our cast comes to you with little rehearsal time and without access to our theater has found props and costumes to use from their own home. So if you're interested in participating in future programs such as this, please send us a message on our Facebook page or message myself, MJ Wisniewski personally, and I will add you to the list. Also watch our Facebook page for more information about next Tuesday's show. Now I would like to introduce the cast. Cast, when I call your name, give the audience a wave, let them know your character's name and where you are from. Ryan Smith. My name is Ryan Smith. I'm playing the role of Daryl, and I live in Midland, Michigan. Marcy Rogers. Hi, I'm Marcy. I'm coming to you from Midland, Michigan. Trishan Donald. Hi, I'm Trishan. Um, I'll be playing Reagan and Carter today, and I'm coming to you from Saginaw. Andy Harrington. I'm Andy Harrington from Midland, and I'm the guy playing Guy. <laughs> Kira Dixon. Hi, I'm playing Regina, and I'm coming to you from Europe, North Michigan, and Standish. Jeffrey Merriman. Hi, I'm Jeff Merriman, and I'm playing Francis, and I'm from Pearland, Texas. Danessa Hellis. Hi, everybody. I'm Danessa. I'm playing Millie. Um, I'm originally from Freeland, Michigan, but I now live in Brooklyn, New York. Katie McLean Peters. Hi, I'm in Midland, Michigan, and tonight I'm playing Andrash. 
and I will be playing the part of the generic man this evening. Also, tonight we have Jacob Kaufman behind the scenes making sure everything sounds and runs smoothly. And finally, our narrator for tonight is Ann Kukla. Ann? Good evening, I'm Ann, and I am coming to you from Bay City, Michigan. So thank you all for joining us tonight. Now sit back and hopefully you have a drink and a snack in hand and enjoy our performance of Six Apartments. Scene one. The lights come up in the living room of a furnished apartment. There's a knock on the front door. After a moment, a jingle of keys is heard, then the door slowly opens. Beatrice peeks her head through the crack in the door. Hello? Hello? She must not be home. Come on in. Beatrice leads Daryl into the room. The sign on the open door reveals this to be apartment 203E. Is it really okay to come in when they're not here? Uh, I, I notified the tenants of the units you'll be seeing today that I would be bringing someone in and they're used to me popping in anytime, anyway. Really? I, I'm very close with everyone in the building. I think of them as family, except ironically, cousin Jimmy. He's a DJ. You manage this entire complex? I sure do. It's gigantic. When I, when I looked it up on Google Maps, I had to zoom out twice just to get the whole building to fit in the screen. Yeah, it's a, it was built in 1985 as a bottling plant for New Coke, then Zima, then Crystal Pepsi. A MySpace used it as their headquarters for a while. Now it's uh, apartments. So, uh, what do you think? Uh, it's, it's fine. I mean, it's adequate for a, something short term. I, I just need a place for a couple months. Tops. Oh, well, all of the units are, you'll see today are available at the first of the month. One bedroom, one bathroom, with fully stocked kitchen, ceiling, floors, walls. They went, went all out. And utilities? Uh, you pay uh, electricity and water. And the gravity and breathable atmosphere are included. The ad said that they're all furnished. What you see here is what you get. Oh, that's, I mean, that's perfect. I'm, I'm not going to be staying long. Well, okay. You'll need your own bedroom furniture. Oh, okay. I, I, can, uh, I can probably just do an air mattress since this is so impermanent. I, or a cheap mattress on the floor. Maybe I'll just sleep on the couch. I mean, I'm not staying long after all. I don't know if I mentioned that. Oh, well, you don't have a bedroom set in your previous address? Well, yeah, but I can't bring it. No? I mean, I could, but I should leave it there. Oh, that seems a peculiar choice. Well, it's the polite thing. I, I'll leave it there for my girlfriend to sleep on. Seems like the right thing to do. Since it's hers. Oh, uh, she won't be moving in also? Just me. Hmm. Oh, well, that seems odd. Uh, you're living together now? Yeah. But you're looking for an apartment? Yeah, that's correct. Oh, and uh, she won't be moving with you? No. Oh. I would imagine that puts a strain on the relationship. Uh, it uh, hadn't really crossed my mind. Really? Huh. Maybe you should think about that. I mean, living separately could be difficult. She'd be so open to temptation. What's to keep her from having some uh, other guy over at any time? I mean, is she the type that might be tempted to pick up some random guy at a bar and bring him home with her on any given night? I mean, she may not seem like it, but you just never really know. She could be with a different guy every night, banging away on that bedroom set that you're politely leaving with her, and you'd never be the wiser. I, a couple of guys at the same time, even. A whole gang of them, and you'd never know. 
What's the security deposit? <sighs> Same as the rent. Uh, she could be with someone this very moment, and get one of those dating apps and... Mm, 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 mm. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> There's my timer! I have to run! Here, uh, here. Take, take your time looking around and uh, let yourself into the other the next unit when you're ready. I'll catch up with you there. Are you serious? Uh, I'm always serious. <laughs> I'm not always serious. Uh, but I was just then when I said I had to leave. You just you just met me. Do you really trust someone alone in someone else's apartment? I trusted you the moment I saw you. Someone that looks like you probably understands that you have to do whatever you can to make people like you. Beatrice runs out. Daryl stands in the silent apartment alone, then decides he's too uncomfortable to stay. As he crosses to the door, he spies a framed photo on a table. He stops, picks it up, and looks at it. Suddenly, the bedroom door opens and in walks Reagan, wearing only a towel, drying her hair with another towel and not seeing Daryl, who has frozen. He sings loudly as she crosses through the room. I'm drying my hair, I'm drying my hair. Just wash my bed, now I'm drying my hair. Reagan exits into the kitchen. Daryl puts the photo down and begins sneaking to the front door, but Reagan reappears, seeing Daryl. He stops in his tracks and they look at each other for a moment. Then she begins singing again as if nothing has happened and continues into her bedroom. My hair is all dry, my hair is all dry. Acting like nothing is wrong here, afraid for my life. She closes the door. The bedroom door reopens and she emerges, aiming a pistol at Daryl. Oh, God, don't shoot. But, but if you really have to shoot, aim for my left shoulder. Uh, it's been hurting me anyway. And, and maybe since I'm used to the soreness, it won't hurt as bad. But still, I'd, I'd really rather you not shoot at all. Don't give me a reason to. I won't. But please don't look for reasons that aren't there, like blinking. I mean, shooting over a blink, that'd be an overreaction. Probably shouldn't make assumptions about what I find shoot-worthy. Okay, look, I knew it was a mistake. Beatrice let me in to see the apartment. And then she left. And I was just about to leave, and you walked in. So maybe ask yourself who's really at fault here. Me, for simply looking for a place to live, or you, for not showering for an extra 10 seconds. What color hair does Beatrice have? Gray. Why? Had to make sure. You might not even know Beatrice. Maybe you saw her name on the mailbox outside and then forced your way in. Or you could have clubbed Beatrice over, over the head, stolen her keys, and let yourself in. But then I'd still know what color hair she has. That's true. But, but I didn't. I didn't look. This is a huge mistake. If I was here to rob you, I'd be wearing like a ski mask or... I know it's cliche, but I kind of enjoy the kitschy charm of it. Fine. She, she did tell me she was she had somebody coming to look at the apartment today, and I forgot. And as weird as it is to think that she'd let a perfect stranger walk around my place, it's not out of character. So I believe you. But I'll still shoot you if you make a sudden move, seeing as how I'm standing here in a towel, but you can look around. I, I could come back. You're here now. Might as well get it over with. I mean, if it's really awkward for you, I could hurry up and change into a towel. <laughs> That's not necessary. Thank you. Uh, I'm Daryl, by the way. Reagan. Nice to meet you. I haven't seen the kitchen or the bedroom. I guess I could just check those out real quick and then I'll be out of your way. Okay, but keep your hands up. You still don't trust me. I do. 
Just, uh, just think it's funny. He peeks into the kitchen. There's the kitchen? He crosses to the entrance of her bedroom. She moves aside so he can look in. And the, uh, and the bedroom. All right, that'll do it then. There's also a great view of the Walgreens parking lot from the window. You don't want to miss that. Uh, breathtaking. Gerald begins towards the front door. We did knock and announce ourselves before we came in, just so you know. My head was wrapped in a towel. I just didn't hear you. Sorry if I scared you with the gun. Gun? Uh, all right. Actually, since you're here, would you mind me asking why you're moving out? It's not a story I'm very willing to share with a complete stranger. No offense. No, I just meant, is there anything I should know about the apartment other than the building having its own zip code and the ridiculously careless building manager? The apartment's great. I'm moving out for my own reasons. You'll be very happy here. Neighbors are nice. No big parties in the middle of the night. No Irish clog dancers upstairs at 6 a.m. Very polite neighbors. Will I be able to play piano here? Absolutely. That's amazing, because I couldn't before. A perfectly reasonable reaction on your part. So I should probably get... Going. What's your story? Why, why are you looking for an apartment? Oh, I just need a change, I guess. From what? From uh, my current living situation. Which is? Living with someone. Your parents? No. Grandparents? No. Some Craigslist rando? A girlfriend. Is that so hard to believe? Kinda. That's rough. What is? That you're breaking up. We're not breaking up. Oh! You're taking the bold step of proving your relationship is strong enough to survive living apart. I can barely hear myself speak over the sound of wedding bells. We're taking a break. Really? A break? Just a little one? Yes. Sounds like a horrible idea to me, but I guess if you're so committed to uprooting your whole life and paying twice the rent, then I have to trust that you know what you're doing. Thank you for your faith. I think you'll be very happy here until you go back. Since we're getting personal, either that's a photo of you and your father or you're into older men. Can't it be both? It's a good picture of you either way. You don't look half bad with clothes on. What does uh, your father do? He's a high school teacher and a track coach. That would explain why you were defending yourself with a starting pistol. Good eye. When did you notice? Oh, immediately. I was just still plenty worried, though. I, I really hate loud noises. Talk about pathetic. It's not even loaded with blanks. Ooh, ouch. What happened? Ugh, I, I bent my fingernail back. That's what I get for being fancy. Oh, let me numb it for you. Numb it? Yeah. Here. Trust me. I no 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 no. You weirdo. Uh, does anything else hurt? You're a freak. Uh, I saw it in a play. Made you forget about your finger, though, right? Yeah, you did. Well, I should I should go. More apartments to see. And I have got to get dressed to visit a friend and then go to a party. Uh, is there anything else you need? My, um, my palms are kind of moist. Can I borrow your towel? Uh, good luck with the apartment and the break. Good luck with wherever you're going and whatever you're doing there and with all of those older men. I'll trust you let yourself out. After all, you let yourself in. <laughs> Daryl exits the apartment. He walks down various hallways, stairwells, then finally walking up to apartment 421W. He knocks, no answer. He inserts the key, 
turns the knob and opens the door. Blackout. Scene two. The lights come up as Daryl peeks his head into the apartment. He enters, looks around, and realizes that he's entered an apartment almost exactly like the one he just left. He looks at the unit number on the outside of the door, then closes it. Before he can figure it all out, the bedroom door opens and Carter walks out, fully dressed, but otherwise looking exactly like her twin sister, Reagan. He stops when she sees Daryl. I don't understand this. I left and I walked from what seemed like miles through this complex and ended up back here. The thing that is really weird is that the number on your apartment is different and the hallway outside your apartment is different, but everything else is the same. It's like I went through some rip in the space-time continuum or something. Okay, well, not the time continuum, but because it's actually the time it should be right now, but the space continuum is just all fucking talky. Do you think this come out as some kind of sign that I, that I don't know, I'm supposed to live here? Or that maybe something to do with you? Is that possible? I know this sounds crazy, but this is just the most amazing, weird thing that's ever happened to me. Isn't this just the most incredible thing you've ever heard? Excuse me. She disappears into her bedroom, then reappears with a gun pointed at Daryl. What is wrong with you? You know I know that's a starting pistol. She moves the gun a little to the left and fires. What the hell, Reagan? What's the matter? Reagan? Are you bipolar? I was just here. There's a picture of you and your father right there on the table. Are you sure? Uh, okay, no, that, that actually appears to be you with Shamu the whale, not the actual whale, a man dressed up as Shamu, or a woman. I don't want to sound biased, but if it is a woman, I hope she's earning the same amount as what a man would be if it never mind. Look, I'm totally confused right now, but if you're going to shoot me, can I please ask that you aim for the left shoulder? It's been bothering me. I'm not going to shoot you. You have the wrong apartment. Reagan is my twin sister. Uh, I don't know what apartment she lives in, but you can go ask the building manager. Beatrice. Right. Yeah, she has gray hair. That's true. Well, not that that proves anything, because if I had clubbed her over the head and took the key, I mean, I'd, uh, I'd still, uh, never mind. Uh, she gave me the key to your apartment. I'm here to look at it because you're moving out. All right. Uh, well, take a look around. I don't think I really need to. Uh, you and your sister have very similar tastes. We're nothing alike. I, I beg to differ. Can we not talk about my sister? Okay, fine. I guess I went, since I went through the trouble of walking here, letting myself in, being shot at, I might as well do the cursory walkthrough. So crazy. Do you want me to do it up with my arms up like this? Why would I want that? Oh, okay. never mind. Let's see, uh, it's the kitchen and the uh, bedroom. All rings. Everything checks out. I didn't, um, I didn't catch your name. Carter. I'm Daryl. Reagan is moving out? Uh, yeah. You didn't know that? Yeah. I knew that. I, I love to ask questions I already know the answer to. It's my favorite thing. Uh, now, I'm going to ask you if you're a complete dumbass. I'm sorry? Well, are you a complete dumbass? Yes. I am a complete dumbass. I knew that. All right, then. Well, I'll just wait for Beatrice in the hallway. Did you like her? Beatrice? Are you a complete... Reagan. Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, she seemed nice. She liked you. Oh, yeah? You can sense those kind of things? It's really annoying. Like one time, she got hit in the head with a book, and I totally felt it, which was especially weird because I'm the one that threw it. <laughs> Talk about instant karma. Anyway, a, a couple minutes ago, I could feel that she was having some kind of emotional moment, and I guess you're the reason. 
I, uh, I scared her while she was wearing a towel. That was probably it. Well, she liked it. I, ha I have a girlfriend. But you liked her. She seems really great. And pretty? Yes, pretty. Everyone thinks she's so pretty. It's been the same thing my whole freaking life. Reagan got all the attention, all the boys, all the breaks, all because of her looks. It's unfair. Let me get this straight. So you're saying that your identical twin sister has always had the unfair advantage over you because of her looks. What else could it be? I don't know. Uh, your attitude? Daryl starts towards the door. As he approaches it, there is a knock. I'll, uh, I'll get that for you. He opens it. Beatrice enters. Oh, hello. You made it. Hello, Carter. Hi, Beatrice. Are you coming down later, honey? I don't think so. Well, I certainly hope you do. Daryl, the last apartment you saw belongs to Carter's sister, Reagan. Isn't it funny that twin sisters ended up living in the same apartment building completely by coincidence? Based on the size of this complex, I'd say the odds are good that every person on earth knows someone that lives here, or is someone that lives here. Oh, gracious. <laughs> I know, it took me 20 minutes to get up here from my apartment. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh now I have to go back. Uh, here's the key to the next unit and meet you there. Wait. Well, thanks for letting me take a look. Are, are you okay? You don't want to hear my problems. That's nice of you. I got a bunch of my own, so I, I appreciate you. Beatrice is right. I didn't even know Reagan lives in the same building until I almost ran into her one day uh, on my way to the hallway. I first thought I was looking at a full-length mirror that someone left in the middle of the hallway, so I started checking myself out. Impressed at how good I looked that day and until my reflection started laughing at me. And now I didn't even know she's moving out. Yeah, um, well... Not I, that I care, but did she say where she's going? Not that I care. She didn't. I, I don't really want to get involved in a bunch of other people's business. I got a lot of my own. What? Wait. Did she say anything about going somewhere with someone? Like I said, I really didn't pry. It's none of my business. And Did she say anything about moving into a house on the corner of Ellsworth and First? You know, I must say, it's getting... That's a ridiculously specific question, considering I told you she said nothing. If anything, your question should be getting more general in scope. A, a charming little two-bedroom with a garden in the back, just big enough for some succulents, and a small round table with two route iron chairs for morning coffee every day. I really feel like you're not grooving to the beat I'm laying down here. Well, nice to meet you. Thanks for letting me look around. Bye! Daryl opens the door, backs out, closes the door behind him. Daryl hurriedly walks away from Carter's apartment, looking at the room number on the next key. Walking through an outdoor courtyard that opens out to a nearby street, Daryl spies something in the dense plant life at his feet. He stops and leans down as if to pet a cat, then jumps back suddenly. He watches, startled, as the cat runs into the street, hearing the sound of screeching tires and a small thump. He casually looks around to see if anyone witnesses this, then quickly moves on. Blackout. Scene three. The lights come up basically on the same apartment again. Guy is sitting across from Reagan showing her flashcards. Some have pictures of people on them, others have mathematical formulas. The math causes her no problems whatsoever. She hesitates a bit when naming the faces she sees, all having Hungarian-sounding names. She's having a problem with the current one. <sighs> Who is that? Did you add that one? No. Why would I try to trick you, Reagan? You've seen this one so many times. 
I'm totally blanking. It's Count Zrinyi Miklos, the 17th century Hungarian general, statesman, and poet. I mean, I guess since you were stuck on that one, I probably should have just ran outside and grabbed the first 10-year-old child I saw, brought him in here, and had him tell you the answer. You know who else knew that one? This candle? It smells like lavender. It puts the, and, it's, and its knowledge of the House of Zrinsky noble family basically puts you to shame right now. Maybe we should take a little break. Sorry. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. I am apologizing. I was out of line. It's not possible for you to be too harsh. You could never be harder on me than I am myself. It's just, this is going to happen any day. I know. <laughs> Believe me, I know. I want him to love you the way I do. I mean, you know what I mean. I get it. That's why this means so much to me. Do you know how amazing you are? <laughs> Stop. I mean it, Reagan. That day I met you when I was folding my clothes in the laundry room, and you came in, and I thought you were Carter, so I playfully threw a pair of my underwear at you, and you looked at me with such a profound expression of hurt and being grossed out but also somehow so forgiving and full of grace. And I felt as esteemed Hungarian Laszlo Biro must have when he failed in his first attempt to develop a new type of ballpoint pen, but ultimately succeeded in producing what would become the main product of the Bic company. It's a testament to you as a tutor that I already knew that story. <laughs> And you should know that if those skivvies hadn't been freshly washed, you'd be a dead man now. <laughs> I'm, I'm constantly terrified that Carter is going to find out. She'll put a stop to it. We've been careful. I've been sensing so much confusion and hurt in her lately. She must at least be aware that you and I know each other. Well, not from me. I never told her about the underwear incident, or that time I goosed you in the elevator, or flashing you in the sauna. I know how she gets. To be fair, you, it does seem like you confuse me for her a lot. Everyone in this building talks so much, though. Uh, let's play it cool at the party. Right. Speaking of that, I need to change my shirt. You look good in that one. But, yeah, I have another one exactly like it. I just like to stay fresh. <laughs> you have a backup for everything, don't you? I like being prepared. Guy exits to his bedroom. Reagan picks up the flashcards and sorts through them. There is a knock on the door. Come in. The door opens slowly. Daryl peeks his head in. Excuse me, I'm... When he sees Reagan, he throws the door open. Revealing this is apartment 321N. Excuse my French, but what the F? What are you, triplets? Let me guess, your name is Nixon. It's me, Reagan. I take it you ran into my sister. I did. That must have been confusing. You have no idea. You rent two apartments? My friend lives here. Is she home? Guy, yeah. Should I wait for him before I start looking around? Guy? No, you can look around. He won't mind? Guy? Not at all. No, I said he. I know. You can stop telling me he's a man. Guy? This is worse than having a gun pointed at me. His name is Guy. <laughs> he must have had parents with no imagination. And some foresight. His parents have a lot going on, believe me. How was Carter? She's quite the complex individual. She's still moving out then. Yeah, why wouldn't she be? Well, you see... But, you know, I'm sorry. Sorry I asked. No offense, but I really don't want to get mixed up in all this stuff. I have a lot of my own drama going on, and... <gasps> Did the oh. Death Star just blow up Alderaan? I, I had a skedaddle. <laughs> Reagan runs out. The bedroom door opens and Guy enters. What the F? Please don't think about pointing a gun at me. Oh, now that's literally all the only thing I can think about. 
If Beatrice's hair is gray. Greg's shirt is red. <laughs> Who's Greg? Friend I had in college. <laughs> I wish something would happen. The door flies open and Carter bursts in. Oh, good. Carter, what's wrong? You tell me. Greg's shirt is red. I'm gonna go. Oh, no you don't. Carter slams the door. He told me what you're doing with my sister. I'm what? Carter, what are you talking about? And who is this? I didn't say anything about this guy, whose name is actually Guy, and your sister. He said enough. And the fact that he's here right now proves that you're still moving out at the end of the month. So, can you look me in the eyes and tell me that absolutely nothing is going on between you and Reagan? Carter. Tell me nothing is going on with you and Reagan. Nothing is going on between Reagan and I. I believe him. You know, when she was here just a little bit ago, I didn't get the sense that- She was here? Um, no. No, I, uh, I got confused. I, I meant when you were here a little bit ago, except I didn't mean a little bit ago, I meant now. See, I have a problem with perception of time. It's a neurological thing. Uh, I was punched by a donkey when I was little. But see, that's the thing. It wasn't when I was little. It was last week. That's the horror of this condition. Also, I meant I was kicked by a donkey, not punched. I didn't accidentally say that because of any pre-existing condition. I'm just kind of flustered right now. Uh, I'm going through some drama in my life, and I just- Shut up, you idiot. I can't, I can't believe you. Carter exits. Um, guy? It, it probably seems right now that I materialized out of thin air for the express purpose of ruining your life, but I promise I didn't mean to do that. Well, you couldn't have inadvertently hurt me any worse. Yeah, that depends. Um, do you own a cat? There's a slight knock on the door. Beatrice lets herself in. Oh, there you are. So what do you think of this one? You know, to be honest, I haven't really got a chance to look around yet. Let's see. And then kitchen, uh, bedroom, Walgreens. Looks great. Let's move on. Uh, hi, hi there, guy. See you in a little bit. Hi, Beatrice. Yep, I'll be there with the bells on. Oh, I, I don't know who this bells on fellow is, but I'm very excited to meet him. Beatrice exits. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm really sorry, man. Man is my brother. Blackout. Scene four. The lights come up basically on the exact same apartment. Daryl and Beatrice are already inside along with Regina. And that is why I'll never eat from a salad bar again. Huh. Oh. oh, 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 there's my timer. Oh, and there's my next batch of cupcakes. Um, okay, here's the last one. I'll meet you there. Beatrice exit. Daryl looks around the apartment. Have you figured out yet that all the apartments are exactly the same? This is all a colossal waste of time. Um, one sec. He does another one of his tours of the apartment. Yep. <laughs> when I came to look, there were nine units opening up. I let her show me four of them before I stopped her. She's a sweetheart, though. Yeah, at this point, I'm mostly trying to figure out how it's possible that I can see a Walgreens from every side of this building. Because there are four Walgreens surrounding this monolith. Oh. Well, congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Walgreen. But this one, uh, this one's my favorite. The W's burned out, so it looks like Al Green opened a drugstore. <laughs> Are you going to bother to see the next one? I think I might, yes. Hmm. What was that? I said, hmm. A sound indicating confusion and curiosity. Perhaps both. Thanks for um, letting me look around. I'll get out of your hair. Uh, would you like a beer? You got anything stronger? 
Now you're talking. Okay. So uh, what's your story? Everyone here seems to have one that I have no interest in hearing. Nothing too exciting. I'm moving in with my girlfriend. Oh, Mazel tov. I'm, uh, I'm not Jewish. Neither am I. Is your girlfriend? No. Oh, well, congratulations. <sighs> mm. Um, moving in with your girlfriend, huh? I'm doing the exact opposite. You're moving out of your boyfriend's place? Um, okay, I'm doing half of the exact opposite. You're moving into your boyfriend's place. Wrong half. Um, I'm moving out of my girlfriend's place. Oh, sorry. Why does everyone keep saying that? I mean, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Explain to me why you're going through the motions of seeing at least three apartments that are exactly the same. Well, this is the fourth of uh, five since you're twisting my arm. Okay, all right, well, well all right. that's vaguely uncomfortable. I, I guess I really don't want to go home. So you're looking at five facsimiles of the same apartment unit getting involved in people's lives to avoid thinking about your own? Actually, I've done everything I can to avoid becoming enmeshed in the Melrose placeness of this place, but uh, I failed. Oh, please. I can read you like a Kindle in a dark bedroom after a bad scissor date. <laughs> By the way, if you ever become a lesbian and want to meet someone, don't use scissor. <laughs> You'd have a better chance of meeting a suitable woman on eHarmony, and they actively weed out women looking for other women. <laughs> but they fail. Are you actually saying I'm trying to create drama just to avoid my own sorry life? Prove it. There's a knock on the door. Come in. The door opens, revealing this is apartment 121S. And Francis enters. Hi, Regina. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know you had company. That's okay, Francis. Uh, this is Daryl. He's thinking of taking my apartment or one of the other four exact replicas he's looking at today. Hi, Daryl. <laughs> I live right across the, uh, the hall. I promise I don't barge in a lot. <laughs> Not nearly enough, Francis. <laughs> You're sweet, Regina. I'm going to miss you. Though I'm so happy for you and that wonderful woman it sounds like you found. Thank you, Francis. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. My search for true love would have ended long ago if you just had a vagina. Oh, Regina. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry. What did you need, hon? Oh, uh, I'm wondering if you've seen Anderson Cooper. What? Oh, no, I haven't. Something happening? Should we turn on CNN? Uh, not that Anderson Cooper, dear. That's the name of Francis's cat. Oh, F. I, I often let him out to play in the courtyard right outside my patio. <clears throat> uh, one of the little perks of living on the first floor. He's an indoor cat with an outdoor spirit, uh, my little Anderson. <laughs> he usually only stays out there for 20 minutes or so, but he's been gone for over an hour. I'm sorry, honey. I haven't seen him. I'm getting concerned. He'll come prancing at any moment now, just like the real Anderson Cooper appearing on your TV screen with a steady gaze and a comforting demeanor in the darkest of times. He's the most trusted name in news, Francis. I'll keep a lookout and let you know if I see him. Sometimes he pops up outside my window looking at me with those steely blue eyes. You know, the real Anderson Cooper is a Vanderbilt. His older brother, Carson Vanderbilt Cooper, committed suicide by jumping off a balcony at the age of 23. That's what sparked Anderson's interest in journalism. Uh, anywho, <laughs> see you later at the party. Will do. Francis exits. Everyone in the building here is really nice. You'll be happy here. <laughs> yeah, there is a 0% chance of that for some Many reasons. Uh, but let's focus on the positive. You must be so excited. I am. It's a big step moving in together. We've been dating for two months. So by lesbian time, we should have moved in a month and three weeks ago. 
she had to break up with someone first. Oh. Yeah, not the way you want to start things, but she said she's been unhappy with her current girlfriend for a long time. She just needs time to finish things with her, and then I'll move into her place. Am I an asshole? No way. You're 300 times better than whatever loser she's slumming with now. What I'm saying must be true, because I am definitely drunk. You had half a drink. Well... Regina, according to my iPhone health app, I have walked 15,000 steps around this stupid apartment complex today. Somehow managed to climb 20 stories, even though I've mostly taken the elevator, except for the areas of the building that for some reason aren't reachable by modern day people moving technology. I barely slept last night, haven't eaten a thing since early last evening, had two firearms pointed at me, sustained indescribable psychic damage, and inflicted accidental harm that hopefully the occupants of this building will never know. But... I will prevail. I will prevail! Thank you for the drink. Daryl moves to the door, exits, and closes the door behind him. Blackout. Scene five. The lights come up on yet another of the same apartment. A generic man sits in a chair, not reading, not looking at his phone, just sitting. Daryl goes through his usual tour. Well, let's see, uh... Kitchen, bedroom, Walgreens, all right, all right. What's your story? My story? Everyone here seems to have one. Oh. Why are you moving out? I'm, uh, I'm moving to Akron to sell insurance. That's it? Um, do you know Reagan and Carter? Uh, the presidents? No. Do you know Reagan and Carter? Uh, I don't know what you're asking me. I was... Um, I was really expecting more from the last apartment, but uh, never mind. See ya. Daryl heads for the door. There's a knock. Daryl opens the door, showing this is apartment 222N. Reagan enters. Reagan? Hi, Daryl. Uh, I ran into Beatrice, and she told me where you were. I'm glad you haven't left yet. I was uh, just coming back to going back to Beatrice to give her his keys. Have you made a decision? Yeah. Yeah, this has been a huge waste of time. I, I'm going to go home and work things out with Millie. Is that really an option? I kind of got the impression you were... Thrown out on my ass? Uh, no, I was. I was. This is just something we do from time to time. Uh, she pushes my buttons. I pretend it doesn't affect me until I finally blow up, and she acts surprised at my reaction, so she can pretend she had nothing to do with it. And that tells me to get out. I say, fine. And I was going to go anyway. I head out with the intention of changing my life and moving on. Then I eventually go back. And, uh, and so I will. And things will be fine. Oh, well, that's good. Sure, I, I guess. I just wanted to apologize. I, I went back to Guy's apartment and he, he told me what happened. None of that was your fault, so don't feel bad. I still don't know what's going on, but, but somehow I feel responsible for at least some of it. Well, don't. I know you didn't want to get involved in any of this, and so now you can just walk away and forget it all. But I wanted you to know that I'm not the awful person you must think I am. I'm a completely different kind of awful person. I don't think you're an awful person at all. So I didn't identify you as a specific kind of awful. I actually feel bad for you. Your sister's a dick. But see, you're wrong. Everyone thinks I'm the good sister and she's the evil twin. Mostly because I've done everything to make it seem that way. Carter was the sweetest, most trusting little sister in the world. And I've abused her kindness over our whole lives. She was actually supposed to be born first, but I literally wrestled her out of the way and fought my way out. She's the one you should feel bad for. I mean, now I mainly just feel bad for your mother. 
It didn't stop after that. I tortured that poor girl. Blamed her for all the bad stuff I did when mom and dad caught me. Put her down in front of our friends so I would look like the cool, smart one. Started rumors about her. Snuck panties out of her dirty laundry and sold them to boys. She finally decided she had enough a couple years ago and we've been estranged ever since. So you really both moved into this building by complete chance? It's a twin thing. We can't get away from each other. But listen, uh, I just wanted you to know, even though I've been a bad sister, I'm not doing it with her ex-boyfriend behind her back, just in case you were getting that feeling. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it, it definitely looked that way. That's what I meant when I said I'm terrible, but a, a different kind of terrible than you thought. And I'm trying to do better. Why was it important for you to tell me all this? I don't know. Because you seem like a good person, I guess. From the moment I met you, I just trust you. Because I'm ugly? What? No. And I was right. Look at you. Doing the right thing and going home to make things work with your girlfriend. <laughs> that, that does not make me a good person. Won't that make her happy? Doubtful. And that's kind of beside the point anyway. I mean, I'm doing it because I realize it's stupid of me to try to change. Millie is flawed. She tells everyone her name is short for Millicent, but her given name is actually Mildred, and it fits her. I mean, yeah, it probably has a lot to do with the fact that she was raised by parents that would name their child after a word they heard on a Tylex commercial, but her sister Comet turned out fine. So... Why? Why go back to her? Well, because even though she is who she is, the problems in my life really begin anytime I start to think I deserve better. But I don't. Why would you say that? Well, today's a great example. Look at what I've done. Subconsciously, I've inserted myself in the lives of strangers and sabotaged them at every turn. You did everything you could to stay out of things. Did I? I mean, I can't even pet a cat without ruining someone's life. How? The less you know about that, the better. Listen, before we go, you see him too, right? Reagan gives a sideways glance to generic man. Daryl gives her a reassuring nod. Good. So if you're not moving in with Guy, where are you going after you move out? Join in the Peace Corps going wherever they send me. I've been a selfish jerk my whole life and I need to atone. I think it's something Carter would appreciate. Maybe someday she'll let me be her sister again. Well, uh, I guess I said what I wanted to. Good luck with your girlfriend. I think you're a better person than you give yourself credit for though. I was about to say the same thing to you. Daryl exits. Remembers generic man is still in the room. So that was Reagan. Daryl pulls the collection of keys from his pocket and exits. Blackout. Scene six. The lights come up on Carter's apartment, 421W. Carter waddles into the room with, from her bedroom carrying luggage. There's a knock on the door. Who is it? Daryl. Who? The dumbass. Come in, I guess. I mean, the door's locked. Uh, oh, wait, wait. One second. You can hear the sound of keys and one being inserted in the lock. Then the door opens and Daryl enters. Going somewhere? You really are a mental giant, aren't you? Go ahead and lash out at me. I know that there's a kind, loving person behind that wall of hurt and anger. What are you doing? Trying to remember where I packed my gun. Um, so did you want to look at the kitchen again or? No, I came to talk to you. Well, I'm off to the airport. It'll have to wait. When are you back? Never. You can talk to me never. You're leaving for good? I mean, what about all your stuff? 
Anything that doesn't fit into these bags is getting left behind. You can have it all when you move in. Tell everyone you're the one in the Shamu costume. Where are you going? Join in the Peace Corps. Just signed up. <laughs> That's funny to you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Guess who else is joining? You can't be serious. Uh. No biggie. Uh, the, the corps send their volunteers all over the world. What are the chances we'll end up in the same camp? I think that's another one of those questions you already know the answer to. God damn it! Why does she... Why? Why is she so invested in destroying my life? Is Guy going to? No. no Reagan and Guy aren't a thing, and she doesn't want to hurt you. What do you know about it? Uh, more than you think. I know how she tortured you growing up. The lies, the rumors, the panties. The what? You know, how she sold your dirty panties to boys. Oh my god! Oh, uh, F. I always wondered why they kept disappearing. I, I thought they were disintegrating. For the longest time, I thought my crotch was highly corrosive. The point is that she regrets all of that, and she misses you. Um, I think you need to talk to her, but just don't mention the panties, okay? Screw this. I'm, I'm leaving anyway. If I end up running into Reagan in some butthole of the world, I'll just run off to another one. Luckily, this world is replete with buttholes. You can't just leave it like this. You'll live with regret forever. Why do you care? I, I don't know. But, but something won't let me leave without trying to solve this. I don't know what you have going on in your life, but I'm not some prop. I'm not some prop in your plan to make you feel better about yourself. If you won't talk to Reagan, at least talk to Guy. He seems like the innocent victim in all of this. He's the biggest disappointment of all. Even if he isn't banging my sister. He really let me down. What happened? I thought I found someone that believed in me. He made me feel the way I always wanted to feel about myself. Somehow he could quiet the tiny Reagan in my head. We were gonna get married, get a cute little place together, and then he wanted me to meet his parents. But isn't that usually a good thing? Usually. Turns out his father is super judgmental. I have to pass a crazy test to prove my worth. It's like some insane version of the SATs with a math portion and a Hungarian history portion. A what? Guy's family takes their Hungarian heritage very seriously. His father would literally bar him from being with any woman that doesn't share their passion for the old country. Well, why not just, I don't know, I mean, learn Hungarian history to pass the test? I started to, but then I was like, what am I doing? I'm an amazing, impressive woman in so many ways, more than good enough for any guy, even guy. And I shouldn't have to put myself through some kind of test to please his father and guy should back me on that, but he didn't. Oh. I don't care about hungry. I mean, sure, when I went through my dance phase a few years ago, the Hungarian Shardos was my favorite, but I don't need to learn the entire history of France because I love French fries. The Shardos? Oh my God, it's so fun. And the Hungarian gypsy dance? Those Hungies really know how to get down. Does Guy know about that? I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. The thing is, even if I learned Hungarian history out the yin yang, there's nothing I can do about the other part. It's like Reagan usurped all of the mathematical genes mom and dad had to pass down. When it comes to math, she's like rain man. And I'm like walking around in the rain, man. Too bad there isn't a wordplay portion of this test. It all just goes to prove that Guy and Reagan were made for each other. If they aren't already together, they're bound to figure out that they should be. So you're just giving up?
That's the plan. Here, uh, give Beatrice my key. Tell her I said thank you for everything. I had a really great time living here for a while. It was the happiest I've ever been, actually. And the weird thing is, I could sense Reagan knew it and that she was happy for me. Oh well. Thanks anyway. It, uh, it was nice of you to try to help. You're right. I, I guess if I thought, if I fixed something, it might somehow mean that I fix the things my own life could change. You know, too bad. I was starting to like the idea of living in this crazy place. Lock up when you leave, Chief. Carter gets all her bags through the door and disappears down the hall. Time to head home. Blackout. Scene seven. The lights come up in Beatrice, Beatrice's apartment. The door is wide open, revealing this is apartment 101E. The furniture is pushed aside to open up the space, and every level surface area has cupcakes on it. Beatrice is presently exiting her kitchen holding another batch. Regina is enjoying one as are Guy and Reagan, doing their best to pretend that they aren't as friendly with each other as they are. Generic man sits in the corner, a, a look of simple contentment on his face, holding a cupcake but never eating it. Here's the last batch. Double chocolate cream cheese with cookies and cream icing. You'll notice now that the full selection is present and that there isn't any red velvet option available. That's because red velvet is the white Zinfandel of baked goods. It's bad, right? Yes, guy. There aren't any college kids or hookers coming, so I didn't make any. These are amazing, Beatrice. Seriously. I'm gonna walk out of here 10 pounds heavier. Well, you could use it, honey. All my excess weight goes straight to my fingers. I'm glad you're leaving. Do you think Carter will stop by? Uh, I really doubt it. Well, that's a shame. I love having these parties for departing tenants, but I understand not everyone is in a celebratory mood when they're Move to start a new life. That's for sure. Daryl enters, surprised to find a party and all the people he's met recently. Oh, hello. Look who it is. The red velvet of people. Oh, thank you, guy. I'm glad there's no hard feelings. I'm calling you White Zinfandel. Guy, there's no need for that. I, uh, I just came to drop off you know, all the keys, and then I'll be on my way. Oh, nonsense! Stay and have some cupcakes. Did you make a decision on a unit? Uh, well, thank you. You know, I, yes, the unit I choose is a small, well-lived-in one about uh, three miles from here. Oh, 421 in the West Quadrant, then. I'll draw up the lease. <laughs> No, no, thank you for your time, Beatrice, but I won't be moving after all. Oh. Hmm. Oh, it's because you want to keep your girlfriend from banging all those men, isn't it? I think that's commendable. He dodged a bullet, Bernice. This dude is trouble. Guy, I'm far from perfect, and I really am sorry if I caused you any problems. But I promise you I'm not a bad guy. I, I've done my best to fix the damage... All the damage I've caused today. Francis enters. Hello, everyone. Well, most of the damage I've caused today. Hi, Francis. It's my favorite dude in the whole world. Anyone who messes with my friend Francis better buy extra insurance. You're around, <laughs> insurance guy. <laughs> so glad you could come have some cupcakes. I certainly will. Uh, uh, thank you, Beatrice. Anderson Cooper come back? No. I wanted to talk to you all about that, uh, Beatrice. Uh, he's been missing for some time. Oh, well, that's unlike him. I'm getting so worried. 
if something happened to Anderson Cooper, I'm going to kill myself so I can meet God and punch him in the face. Well, tell you what, I walk down to the leasing office and check the security cameras. If I don't see him, then I'll check the tapes for the South Courtyard where he usually hangs out. If something happened to him, I'll know in a jiffy. Thank you, Beatrice. <laughs> well, enjoy the party, everyone. I'll be back in no time. Beatrice exits. So, uh, I should definitely be moseying on. Daryl, stay a while. Di doesn't really blame you, do you, Guy? He's just hurt. I want you to stay. You do? Have some fun before you go home to the misery that is your life. At least stay until I get back from the bathroom, okay? I, I think those pumpkin cupcakes had a lot of bran in them. Wait. Reagan runs towards the bedroom. Reagan, I, I really have to go. Me too. Reagan is gone. Wow. You're going back to her, huh? It's a long story. I'd love to stay here and tell it, but... Francis, no. Yeah, yeah, I really have to get out of here. Please tell Reagan. Tell that we'll meet again someday. He turns and is about to leave when his exit is blocked by Carter. Carter! Everyone, especially Guy, turns to watch her as she struggles to get through the doorway with her bags. <laughs> I'm so glad you came back to make everything better. Shut up. I'm leaving for good. But I just wanted to say one thing before I go. I'm a good person. The best person you'll ever know. A better person than I even know. And the reason I have to go away and try to remember the good person I am is because of what you did to me. But I'll be that person again. And you won't get to be with him. Carter. That's all. Where's my sister? Dropping a two. Reagan, it's Carter. I'm leaving. But before I go, I just wanted to tell you I know about the panties. Oh, come on. Since we're in mixed company, I'm not going to call you the word that I want to do. But look down. It's the thing right next to where the poop is coming out. Bad bye, Reagan. Bad bye. But, uh, that is some brilliant wordplay. Carter, where are you going? Far away. You can't. I'm working to fix all of this. You have to trust me. Fix it how? Are you going to finally stand up to your, brother, to your father for once? Carter picks up the bags and begins hoisting them through the door into the hallway. I'm doing something even better. You don't get it, do you? Guy follows her out into the hall. Maybe you don't get it, Carter. You're important to me, but if you loved me, you'd understand that my family is important to me too. Why does everything have to be on your terms? Reagan bursts out of the bedroom. Carter, wait! That's it, Reagan. Start the healing. Reagan runs to the hallway, and an argument is heard. Guy is standing in the hallway watching it. Please, don't leave. I am. And if you know what's good for you, you'll stay away from the Peace Corps. Or what? Or else. You're gonna fight me at a Peace Corps camp? I'm aware of the irony. I'll do what I want. You don't own volunteer service. Volunteer service is an abstract concept and cannot be owned. That's what I'm saying. Just like always, taking my ideas and making it seem like you thought of them first. I was pointing out the idiocy of your statement. I don't need you to do that. I'm smarter than you. I'm not. It's am not. Both work. Mine sounds better. We're equally smart in different ways. Dad said so. Dad told me in secret I'm smarter in every way. That's not true. 
He named me Carter because obviously he was the better president. Now you're delusional. Reagan ended the Cold War. Carter won the Nobel Peace Prize. In 2002, long after his term. Still counts. You're the reason mom is dead. Mom is alive. She, she's dead inside. I hate you. I hate you. Guy jumps out of the way as Reagan storms back into the apartment and goes straight to the bedroom. So, how did that go? Done. I'm just done. Ladies, please, don't leave it like this. She's picking up her bags. Nope, nope, dropping them. Oh, fell over, picking them up again. Oh, super frustrated. And now she's... Cutter knocks Guy out of the way, storms into the apartment, goes to the doorway of the bedroom. And one last thing. Well, I should scoot. I'd just like to point out before I go that Beatrice is advanced in age, and sometimes old people say crazy things. So, good night, and uh, thanks for watching. That's what Anderson Cooper signs off. That's how Anderson Cooper signs off. Uh, well, not in my experience. Daryl starts for the door when Millie appears. She enters the apartment. Um, hi, everyone. Baby, you made it! Hi, baby, I made it. And I brought cupcakes. Kidding. I brought heroin. Kidding again. I didn't bring anything. Is everything okay? There's discarded luggage in the hallway. Some family drama. That's Carter. Reagan's in the bedroom. Beatrice is reviewing security video. There's Guy, Francis, him, and Daryl. Everyone, this is Millie. Hi, baby. Oh, F. You know each other? I'm the girlfriend that Millie's breaking up with, so you can move in. Oh, oh my. I'm so sorry. I didn't know you identify as female, but to be fair, though, those who are transitioning tend to be more obvious about it. You know, she lied to you. She's not breaking up with a girlfriend. And until very recently, I didn't know she was breaking up at all. Are you kidding me? Daryl, we've been building to this for months. When you left today, you said you were moving out. That's what we do, and, th and then we get over it. What made today any different than any other day? The difference is that I thought maybe today was the day you finally figured it out. Damn. You said her name was Linda. Why didn't you just say Daryl? I mean, it's a gender-neutral name. Okay, baby, obviously I wasn't... 100% honest with you, but I'm 100% honest right now when I say I detest lying, and yet I did that for you. So obviously I'm super ready for this. Why didn't you just tell me you were with a man? She's a straight up sociopath. She'll lie about anything to get what she wants. That's not true. I just didn't want you to have any doubts about me or any lingering desire I have for a penis that doesn't have to be strapped on. Regina, did Millie tell you what her full name is? Millicent. <laughs> Figures. Show your driver's license. What is wrong with you? Show her. Let me see it, Millie. Oh my God. See? No, it says Mill Millicent, but that is the hottest driver's license picture I have ever seen. Good hair day, post-beach vacation, masturbated in the car. Wait, what? You lied to me about your real name being Mildew? Why would I say something so ridiculous? Because it was so ridiculous. <laughs> you read me like a Kendall in a dark room after a bad scissor date. You told me your name is Mildew because you knew that would make me instantly pity you for your insane childhood while falling madly for your adorkably quirky, crazy happenstance. And it worked. Oh, 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 
she legally changed her name before she went to the DMV. Thank you, Francis. Uh, another possibility that only supports the links in which you'll go to make the reality, your reality, be the one you want it to be instead of the actual truth. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> you seem to think that I went through a lot of trouble to make you fall in love with me. If I remember correctly, when we met, you were pretty desperate for a place to live because you just got kicked out of Scientology? That probably should have been a red flag. Hmm. Don't say that, Regina. Daryl, this isn't the time or place for this. What do you think is going to happen to make anyone want to think about anything but this? Suddenly, Andrash Gal appears. I have arrived, and I demand full attention. Father! I just flew in from South Bend, Indiana, the city with the highest percentage of Hungarian Americans. And boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> the Uber I caught from the airport had manual windows, and you know, I like varying periods of high wind and then no wind at all, and then high wind again. <laughs> I remember, Father. <sighs> It is time for the exam. Which of these non-Hungarians is the one known as Kartler? Daryl, you think I'm a sociopath? Let's talk about that. Shh, Millie, read the room. I'm she. Oh. So this is the Carter Roosevelt I've heard so much about. Tis, but I'm afraid the exam won't be happening today. I'm not interested in passing any test to prove my worthiness. What is this insolence? <laughs> this is just, this just, just, a, just a way of psyching yourself up. You, you like that, Dad? Remember how you said Mom used to make you really work for it? Oh, please, Carter, just try. Stand up to him. Does this really mean nothing to you? It meant everything to me. That's why I won't degrade myself. Goodbye. But first, uh, does Beatrice have any travel-sized bottles of booze? Carter exits to the kitchen. Okay, seriously, what is this insolence? The bedroom door slightly opens. Reagan gets Daryl's attention and motions for him to create a distraction. Boy, do, do I hate hungry. I mean, <laughs> what the hell is up with that country? I can't even think of one city in Hungary to specifically pick out to make fun of. What are their customs? Like, what are they into? No one knows. It's pretty much a non-country, if you ask me. Reagan makes her way out of the bedroom and behind Andras towards the kitchen. I mean, lederhosen. Right? What's up with that? Well, that's Germany! Oh. Oh, you mean the country Hungary wishes it was. Even Austria's laughing at Hungary. And everyone known Austria's Germany's bitch. What does that make Hungary? Reagan successfully reaches the kitchen unseen, goes in then, out of the swinging door, back into the living room. I am ready for the exam. What? I don't know what all that was about, but very well. As you must know, I have certain specific demands when it comes to the kind of woman I will allow my son to marry and or shack up with. The two most important qualities are as follows. A vast knowledge of Hungary and a proficiency in the math. These qualities are to be passed down to the next generation. The grandchildren of Andrash Gal will not be left unprepared. Guy, your, your name is Guy Gal? Let's do this. What? Oh, when was the Austrian Empire? 
turned into the Austro-Hungarian Empire, giving Hungary the status of an almost equal partner within the empire. 1867. Oh. Oh. All right. Sophia finished two thirds of her book. She calculated that she had finished 90 more pages than she had yet to read. How long is the book? 270 pages. Oh, wow. What is happening That's here? True. She's Something wondering. bigger than us. She's right like, uh, and, and now, my final question. Who is the author of the first epic poem in Hungarian literature? Hmm? What? Simple. Is that a joke? Should I go out and grab the nearest 10 year old and have him answer that one? It's Miklos Zrini of the House of Zrinsky, or House Ooh. of Zrini if you're nasty. <laughs> you have done well. <laughs> so, so she passes. Carter and I can be together. I approve of this union. <laughs> all that's left is for all to witness the celebratory dancing of the Shargas. Carter. Uh, what? Wh what? I didn't know that was part of the test. For someone that displayed an intimate knowledge of Hungarian history, that character has shown a simple matter of the traditional dance of the Zarda should be no problem. Not to worry. I don't expect you to do it without the music. I left my boombox on that strange pile of luggage in the hall. Excuse me. Andras exits. Reagan, do you know the Shardas? I know of it. Why would he expect me to know how to do it? Like, is this extra credit? Have I passed or what? Okay, okay, seriously, what is this? Andras reappears with a boombox. <gasps> Go time! <laughs> Wait, Carter, I know you can do this. I know for a fact you can do this. I think you just need to go into the kitchen and get yourself a nice big drink of water first. Doesn't that sound nice? Water? In the kitchen? Um, yeah. I need a big glass of water first in the kitchen. <laughs> Reagan exits through the swinging door to the kitchen. You know what country I can't get? Chad. Carter is expelled through the swinging door as if pushed out. Oh, and, and now you dance. I'm not doing this. Carter. I know I've let you down. I haven't been there for you the way that I should have been, but I promise all I ever wanted is exactly who you are. The question is, can the woman I love understand how important this is for me? She looks at him. Andres starts the music, traditional Hungarian music. She drops his hand, stands still, then her body erupts into the traditional dance of the charter. Everyone is amazed. She transitions into Hungarian gypsy dancing, which involves slapping of the hips and ankles, which is extra exciting. When she's really feeling it, she gets in the sky. Unable to contain the call of the dance of his ethnic origins, he joins her. The music and dance ends to wild applause of everyone in the room, except for Andras. He approaches her, a stern look on his face. Then everyone, then he takes her and kisses her cheek and gives her a big bear hug. You have my full blessing and benefits. Benefits? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the reward for being a suitable mate for my son and, and, and the future mother of the next generation of Goths. Like money? Naturally. Hmm? Guy, if you maybe just mentioned there was money involved here, I probably would have been a little more open to all of this. Well, I guess I figured it was obvious. Mm. How much do we get? Mm. $200,000 a year. Plus an extra 50000 for every grandchild you produce. Mm. Are you shitting me? Mm. Guy, if we get married and have the three kids we were always talking about, we'd get... Five million dollars a year. I was rounding up. What is the square root of 660? Hmm? Simple, but I, I, I need a glass of water before I tell you. Excuse me. Carter goes into the kitchen. Square root of 660. What does that mean? Seriously? <coughs> I'll never remember that. You say it. Do it. <sighs> Reagan sticks her head out of the kitchen and answers. 661 is a prime number, uh, but it can be factored with a remainder uh, to 25.7099202644. <laughs> He brings her head back in. Carter emerges from the kitchen. And there you have it. I suspect trickery. I am going to re-administer the exam. Thirsty again. Be right back. No. No more. You know what, Dad? The truth is, Carter sucks at math. And she doesn't give a rat's ass about Hungarian history. A pun referencing Vasil Ratz, the Hungarian soccer player. She's obstinate and a little damaged and needs constant reassurance. And I want nothing more than to be there to give it to her for the rest of her life. She makes me happy. So you can bestow your blessing on us and decide to give us the money anyway. Or... Andres exits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not going to give us the money. I... I don't care. Oh, I was going to use it and move us into that sweet little house on the corner of Euclid and First. Maybe someday we'll get there. In the meantime, we'll stay here. I'll move in with you. I was just thinking about how much I was going to miss this place. Well, that wrapped up nicely. Uh, Millie, uh, see you at home? Daryl starts for the exit. Are you kidding? Fine. Uh, whatever. All I know is I have to get out of here, and I can't live in this building, so I have to start looking for a new place, I guess. So I wish you two the best. I'm actually not feeling too great about this whole thing at the moment. Carter and I go into the kitchen. No, you're seriously punishing me because I was with a man? You think you're going, the, you think you're the first straight woman I've converted? I've convinced more people to change their gender preference than Mike Pence. Then what is it? Starting a re new relationship is a gamble. Putting my heart on the line is one thing, but leaving a rent-controlled apartment is a risk I can't take. Not when you're looking so sketchy. Sketchy? As a freshman art student's intro to drawing midterm, I'm out. You have got to be kidding me. Do you have any idea how much work I put into sabotaging this relationship? How much time I've spent plotting how to gradually convince a reasonable, loyal guy that he sucks as a boyfriend so we would break up at the moment of my best convenience? I did something pretty spectacular here and you're gonna throw all that away? Who's the messed up one? Fine, never mind. Come on, Daryl, let's go home. I'm actually Relieved to have straight sex again. My neck is all out of whack. Millie exits. Daryl starts to follow her out. Daryl! What? I, I know we just met, but 
You're better than this. I, uh, I really don't think I am, Francis. I mean, you have to be. Millie comes back in. Let's go. No, Millie. What? How little self-respect do you think I have? None. That's why we work. Oh, not anymore. You know, it really says something that I can't even tell at what point you started making our relationship such a shit show on purpose instead of by pure accident. Let her have it, Daryl. I'm not perfect. I make bad decisions. Or I don't make a decision when I need to, or I say the wrong things at the worst times, but those are just signs of weakness or being accident prone. That's a far cry from lying to people and hurting them on purpose. Maybe I'm an awful person, but I'm not that kind of awful. I deserve better than this. Boom. So you're moving out. Yes. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going, but it won't be with you. And so now I'm stuck paying all of the rent instead of whatever I feel like pitching in. <sighs> Keep telling yourself you're not a terrible person. Everyone in this complex is a goddamn weirdo. Especially that dude. You guys see him too, right? Bye. Millie exits. Bitches be cray, huh? We good? We good. Guy and Carter enter from the kitchen. You all just missed quite a little scene in the kitchen. Two sisters making up after so many years of hostility. It was really beautiful. Probably way better than anything that was going on out here, actually. Reagan will be out in a second. She's just composing herself. Daryl, I wanted to thank you. Without your clumsy, inept attempt at helping... None of this would have happened. Yeah, man. Pending any further information that makes me feel otherwise, you're all right. I'd better get that luggage out of the hallway. I'll help you. Here. I'm just going to take it up to my place and come down. Take it straight to my place. Uh, here. Have a key. Say, weren't you in a big hurry to leave? Yeah, it's basically all you've been talking about since you got here. Nothing's stopping you now. Actually, there is. Francis, buddy, I, uh, I need to tell you something. Beatrice enters. Reagan quietly enters from the kitchen. Francis, honey, there's something I need to tell you. Anderson Cooper is definitely in your apartment safe and sound. Well, thank heavens. What? Well, I couldn't find any sign of him on the cameras, so I let myself in to check. He's nice and comfortable in his little bed that looks like a CNN news desk. <laughs> what a relief. Then why were you gone so long, Beatrice? Oh, well, that's a very good question, Reagan. Before I went to Francis's apartment, I decided to review today's security tapes to see if I could find any sign of Anderson. I saw something very interesting. Seems that our visitor, Daryl, here, had himself quite a little experience for himself in the South Courtyard. Quite a little experience, indeed. Well, what is it, Bernice? Uh, it's quite shocking what I saw. Disturbing. Sad. You poor man. What? Well, innocently bending down to pet that stray cat and having it react so irrationally and then run into terrific? That must have been traumatizing for you. Oh, Daryl. And to not even tell anyone that it happened so as to not bring everyone down? I mean, that was very generous. Wait. 
You mean that stray cat that's caused so many problems? The one that pisses everywhere and tries to claw at you when you walk by? Oh, she's evil. Janice in 322E said it jumped on her head from a tree and scratched up her entire face. Ugh. She wakes up the whole apartment complex with her screaming and yowling in the middle of the night. She attacked poor Anderson so many times. I call her Megan Kelly. I hate that effing cat. Daryl killed that cat we all hate. Well, wait a second, I, I didn't I mean uh, Well, let's cheer for Daryl for killing him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ray for Daryl for killing all the cat we all hate. There go. <laughs> Daryl, I just wanted to thank you for everything you've done today. Becoming involved in our lives, getting Guy and Carter back together, healing my relationship with my sister, murdering that cat. I'll never be able to repay you. Believe it or not, you've, you've helped me just as much. This has been quite a day. <laughs> Are you still gonna go to the Peace Corps? Nope. Gonna stay right here and make up for lost time with Carter. Are you still going back to Mildew? Oh, oh yeah, you missed a bunch of things. As a matter of fact, I just decided I'm gonna move in here. I'm gonna take Carter's apartment. Or his. No, I'm gonna take Carter's. That's so exciting. It is. I think you were right about what you said earlier. I think you were too. Well, hey you two. Which of the cupcakes is your favorite? You know, in all the excitement, I didn't even get to try one. Well, get to it! Uh, by the way, Beatrice, I'll be moving in after all. And I'm not moving out. Neither am I. And Carter is moving into my place. I'm staying too, Beatrice. What? Was this all some big trick to get me to throw a cupcake party? <laughs> Would you blame us, Beatrice? Oh, you know what? I wouldn't. I'm so happy. I'm still leaving. Let's toast. Hold on. Shouldn't we wait for Carter? We'll just do it again when she gets back. To liking your neighbors. They all touch cupcakes and stuff their faces. The end. Good job, everyone. Good job. Bravo, bravo. A wonderful job, Cass. Thank you. And a big thank you to everyone out there that's watching. This show will stay up on our Facebook page, or you may view it on our website or on YouTube. Thank you for your continued support. Next Tuesday, we will present another original work, so please watch our Facebook page for more information. Thank you for watching, and see you next week.